Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. This is Project Black and she's a 2001 MR2 Spider. The goal is to make her into a track car, but I want her to be more street than she is track. And what does street really mean? To me, it means windshield wipers, defroster, heater, AC, a radio, and all the comforts essentially of a street car. The reason why I want to do that is because my other race cars are pretty much tracked out and they're completely gutted. Also, a couple years ago, I took a trip up to Laguna Seca and it was for a bachelor party. All my buddies took the coast, took some really cool pictures, and I was the only one that towed. So I kind of feel as if I really missed out on that trip. So with this platform, she's gonna be more street than she is track. As many of you know, the ZZW30 doesn't have a lot of aftermarket support. So I've been working with some of my partners to develop some products for the MR2 Spider. I'm super excited to show you what these products are, and these are all available via my website, www.shoprelentlessracing.com. These are available in different finishes, different materials, different configurations, and we haven't quite figured out the shipping, but if you DM me, I can answer all of your questions. So let's get started with this video because I'm super excited to show you guys these products. I worked with Hopper Fabrication to develop the new ZZW30 front strut bar for increased torsional rigidity. There is also an optional master cylinder brace. The rear strut bar is a triangulated design which minimizes chassis flex. It is available in mild steel or chromoly and finished in black or gray steelit or powder coated in black, white, blue or red. I'm super stoked to show you this part because it was developed specifically for racers. This is meant for vehicles that don't have a soft top. So this particular piece has optional configurations. It also has options for material and options for finishes. So check this thing out. So let me tell you about some of the features of this particular piece. This does not require you to remove the gas tank. It is a bolt-in piece. You could kind of see in the corners, one over here, there's one back over there, and there is a door bar. The biggest point about this thing is it adds a ton of torsional rigidity to the vehicle and it's super easy to install. You don't have to remove any gas tank or what have you. Now here's what it looks like with the door panel shut. So I'm gonna walk into the vehicle and take a bird's eye view of this particular area and you can kind of see how close it is to the vehicle right there or to the door panel specifically. So there's only just a little bit of room through here. It's probably like a quarter of an inch right there. And then as it dives down, it shoots in towards the door. So it gets you further away from your seat. And you can kind of see the attachment down there. It's two bolts. You've got three bolts down here. And of course there are anchor plates underneath the whole vehicle and you'll get those as well. And again, that door bar is an option. The horizontal bar back there, an option. This is an option too, this bar right here. Let me put the seats in and you guys can see what it looks like. So here are the seats that I'm using. This is the driver's side seat right here. This is the Sparco Circuit. And then on the passenger side, I'm running an Evo, and that's a medium one. So this guy is on a PCI slider. And as many of you know, I helped develop this particular slider. You can kind of see it down there. And the other side, which is the passenger side, I'm using a an adjustable PCI unit. When what this means is it doesn't slide. It can be adjusted, but you have to loosen four bolts underneath here. So there's four nuts that are right underneath here. You can kind of you can kind of see one right there, and then you can kind of see the other one right in there. So it's a little bit different, but I wanted to show you both of those options. And obviously here the slider, you can kind of see the slider in here. So it sits just a tad a little bit higher. And I did a video for that. Here is the bar that helps you adjust that particular piece. Let's put these guys in the vehicle and you can kind of see what it looks like. This is a Sparco circuit. It is sitting on a PCI slider. So let's look at the spacing. First, the bar rides right along the seat and then it opens up just a little bit. Let's take a look at the side view. Here's what it looks like on the side. The seat sits up a little higher than the bar. There's also room in this section so you can get your foot out. And then let's take a look at the spacing for the center console. There's plenty of room right there at the center console. And this is what it looks like looking from the outside in. 
Let's talk about the passenger side. In the passenger side, this is a Sparco Evo, and it is a medium, and it is sitting on a PCI adjustable mount. So I had to run a different bracket over here. So the brackets are usually mirror images of each other, but I'm running two of these guys on both sides, and that was to push the seat over in that direction. And check out how much room we have here. There's, it's barely touching in here. You can kind of see it right there. And there is room over here. We can probably show it over. Well, I guess it's touching just a tiny bit right there, but it is in and it is perfect. And there's also a little bit of room in the back right here. You can see there's about a finger's distance in this distance right here, right behind here. And this is the main row hoop diagonal. And kind of back out and kind of see that. That's what it looks like right there. And that's what the passenger side looks like. Let's talk a little more in depth about the design of this half cage. If you notice, the main row hoop is a little more vertical than what you would normally see. The more vertical the main roll hoop is, the better off you are for rollover protection. In addition, we added a diagonal underneath the main roll hoop, which is great for rollover as well. And we added the trusses in the back over here. And the trusses, what they do is they stop the main roll hoop from going this way or going that way. And if you want some additional protection, this diagonal in the rear right here is very, very important. Furthermore, we added these horizontal bars right in this section. This adds a ton of torsional rigidity to the vehicle, and it follows a great load path via the door bars. This last bar right here is obviously for your shoulder straps, but notice it's bent. The reason why it's bent is because it allows the driver's seat to go further back for tall people like myself. Here we are in the car, and I know I'm really tall, but I'm gonna adjust the seat forward just a tiny bit. But before I do that, let's go over the equipment that I have. I have a Sparco steering wheel attached to a quick disconnect and a short hub. So let me just pull up the seat just a tiny bit. Let me get adjusted. This looks about where I would drive and that's what it feels like. And if you notice the seat's a little higher here, I've got enough room in here. I actually might even go a little bit further up. There we go. Again, I'm really tall. Okay, that feels pretty good. Nice, that's about how I like to drive. I typically drive a little bit closer. I might go back one, maybe like that. Just see how it feels. And of course, this is all personal preference, but there's quite a bit of room here. And notice my headroom. My head's way below this thing. It'll be way below that guy. So everything's good. So let me back it up just a little bit. Actually, what we're gonna do is, next is we're gonna stick the hard top on and you can see how this thing is affected by the hard top. So here's the hard top. It doesn't hit here, but it does barely touch this piece of plastic right on the inside right there. There, you can kind of see it touching right in this section right there, but that's what it looks like. It barely touches it. Keep in mind, if you don't have a halo, this section won't be here. So instead of hitting here, obviously this won't be here, your main obstruction will be the main row hoop right back here. There are three attachment points to the hard top, the front latches, the rear hooks, and of course, there's the third one on the inside. Here's the view from the inside. Obviously, you have your OE latch right here, and I wanted the main row hoop to have a particular angle, but the OE latch does hit it, so you have to modify the way you put this thing on. So here's what you have to do. So unlatch both of these guys, right? So now we're on latch right there. Now I'm gonna take the hard top and I'm gonna shove it backwards just a little bit. You can see how far out it is here. It's approximately about an inch. You can see it's disconnected right here. Let's go back on the inside. On the inside, again, you can see the spacing here. You can see the OE bracket that I cut that was off the soft top. And you can see that the latch now can open completely. So here's the OE bracket, the intermediate bracket, which goes between here, the soft top, and the bracket that is down this section here. So all you gotta do is stick this guy into here. And it's on there loose, okay? So you could loosen this just a little bit, and now this thing is free to move around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this soft top this direction into the right position.
Now it's locked in and I'm just gonna loosen this just a little bit. And then you could see that this hole aligns and so does this guy right here. So all you have to do is stick your bolts in right here and right here. Let me just get this on real quick. And there's enough room in here to tighten with a wrench this way. Once we tighten this thing, now I can push this thing down and it's locked in. So here's a 12 millimeter wrench. You could stick that on right here and you can tighten that puppy down. And then this one as well. And then look, it locks. You didn't think I forgot about you soft hop guys, did ya? This version is specifically designed for the soft top guys. It carries all the same features as the relentless racing version, but it accommodates the soft top. Once again, it is an easy installation which does not require the removal of the gas tank. Here's the harness bar that we're talking about, and that's what is going to stop you going from so far back. But you can see the alignment of the bar and how far back it is, so it allows you quite a bit of movement for your seat. And notice there is a, an attachment for the factory seat belt as well. Interesting thing, Ray owns Serial 001 of the PCI slider. This was the first one that was made. So we have this thing in here and we have a Sparco Evo. And this is a medium or is it a small, Ray? This is an Evo medium right in this here. And again, it's on a PCI slider. So I'm gonna roll it all the way forward. It probably goes closer than this. I don't think anyone would ever roll this way, but rolling it back, it goes quite back quite a ways. And what stops it is the actual harness bar that goes across. But there's quite a bit of movement in here. I'm having trouble touching the pedals. There's no way I would ever drive this way, but there's a lot of movement in this particular version. My partners and I are working really hard to develop new products for everyone. If you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing hit that like button, and of course, hit that notification button. Here's a quick recap. The front rear strut bars have options for material in mild steel or chromoly. There are also options for finishes. You can have it painted in steel it in black or gray, or you can have it powder coated in black, white, blue, or red. Additionally, the front strut bar has an optional master cylinder brace. Lastly, there are roll bar versions for vehicles with or without soft tops with options for additional bars or door bars. Most importantly, it's an easy installation because you don't have to drop the gas tank. DM me if you have any questions, and of course, we will figure out shipping based on your location. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you on the track.